All right, I think we're all right. This is a uh, 1989 Caprice Classic. Uh, it looks every bit like, uh, well, for a while, I guess, probably cop cars and uh, mostly taxis and stuff from the uh, throughout the 80s. So, yeah, all the design cues are the same. This, however, is, I think, 89 was the first year of whatever this engine is here. I can't remember if it's a 305 or a 350. It's probably 350, but uh, this was the first year for uh, standard fuel injection. Oddly, when uh, my buddy brings this car, he's inside the studio playing now, but um, when he's leaving, I usually smell a little bit more unburnt gas than I would expect. And so I don't know if that's in the delivery side of things or whether it just it burns a little bit more than, uh, or it doesn't uh, fully combust. And anyway, he's told me I can uh, take us out for a cruise at some point, and uh, so taking it up. He doesn't know that yet, but hold on, hold on. <laughs> Yeah, I see I get a little bit of it now. Obviously, I wish I could transmit that uh, smell through to the camera there. I'd have a lot of fun with that if uh, smell was something you could do on YouTube. Anyway, I gotta go to the weed store and... Uh, not that it always matters, but... I don't have any insurance on my cars right now. Well, I do have a uh, appointment to go in tomorrow. Left him with a full tank of gas, buddy. Um, yeah, it's pretty plush, you know. Everything's power, of course, and it's bigger than any of my cars, I'd say. Not by a whole lot on the uh, blue one, but. Try and put it back in a way where he doesn't notice I've been out in it. Although he'll probably tune into the video. I don't know if he's a watcher or not, but hold on. If I don't readjust the steering wheel, that's what it'll tell him someone's been out in it. It's obviously a very personal uh, very personal adjustment. It's got quite a bit of power, you know, it gets up. Peppy, you know, you give her a little shot, shot there. Yeah, it's plush. And this is the, uh, I think this is the Broham model, right? So we're Broham. So it's uh, top, you know, it's leather. And these pillowed, uh, those weren't in the base model. Yeah, so check that, she got a lot of good control. Oh, just smoothly accelerate. Like that. Probably the gauges have been updated somewhat from earlier, you know, whatever mid 80s models. They would have had more square, um, square look to them, you know, in the early 80s than they do here. They're still square, but the inside the gauges are round. Cycles decide to uh, tailgate you, you know, like just asking for death. Yeah, in 2019, this would be uh, 30 year, 30 years old, so it is a classic. I like about it. Pretty 
told you I like the sleaze, uh, sleaze factor in the 74 that I got there in the Valiant. This has that, but more. This is a little bit of a, uh, well, a slight refinement on the sleeves, I think, you know. 89 wasn't quite like 74. I think they wanted some sophistication at that point. Who knows whether they were getting it, but there's some. signal stocks and the uh, shifter and all that are like just so shabby man like GM used that shit for fucking decades this one has cruise control here but uh, I'm not quite sure how the key unlocks the fucking door. I reached in. I knew Donnie was short, but holy shit. Like I thought he was more my height. I'm glad he still drives us. I mean, uh, like I say, it's become a classic now and it's, it's pretty cool. I don't know as much about the 80s as I do about other decades, but um, Obviously, enough time has passed that uh, fully applies. I probably wouldn't wave in an older car in this necessarily right now, but that's just my own prejudice. Oh, nice. It's a fucking beauty. You come along, Jer. You come along. It's a Buick. You might be able to see it when we go by. Late 60s. Alright. Oh, I see. Fuck, what's weird? This must have been built in Canada. The uh, water temperature is in Celsius. I don't know. Well, I guess I don't drive a lot of cars that have an actual. Uh, well, my 60s won't do, but I like. The actual numbers on them. The 61 is really just green, red. Holy fuck. So I guess I wouldn't have seen one in a long time that has an actual gauge with the numbers on it. But yeah, that's why I was saying like, a, wow, it's only 60 degrees. And maxes out at 125, which in the Fahrenheit world wouldn't even be an operating temperature really. 40 or 150, 160 even. 
But yeah, I guess uh, if it was built for the Canadian market, even if it was built down south, it would be converted because the Americans one certainly wouldn't be. So I thought I might as well bring it along. I'll show you the door tag when we get out there. It's interesting. But yeah, I believe this is the first year of the uh, that fuel injection. And I think from then on they were all fuel injected by default. I don't even know if you could get a carburetor version uh, after this year. Or uh, after they introduced it. has an old school hood, hood ornament which you don't see much anymore not the ones that stick up although I'm sure it's on a uh, spring so you don't impale somebody that you hit on the street in focus but yeah the uh, manufacturer date 0389 so we're just past the 31st year of this um, I don't know if it will say where it was built one of the numbers probably would say that maybe I'll try and look that up online get all the tire Info. Now it's hard to say, it does have a Canada Transport sticker, but it probably gets those no matter where they're built. Although I suspect this was still probably built in Ontario. Could be wrong. We'll look it up. That's cool. This is very popular on GM cars there, Body by Fisher. That was a thing, and this was a body style, like I said, that was uh, has been in use for a long fucking time. Square uh, dash implements, but uh, round gauges. Very interesting. It's full of fuel because right now, uh, most places, gas is cheaper than it uh, has been. So, you got a car this size, just put some motherfucking gas in it. And yeah, all the uh, proper accoutrements of the late 80s. Powered seats. Actually, powered seats I had in my uh, 62 Thunderbird, but that was a very expensive car. Power locks, windows, 
And yeah, these uh, pillowed, pillowed leather, they're quite comfortable. Uh, these would have been Broham edition uh, stuff. Yeah, there you go. Broham. Yeah, it's pretty classic. I know that's coming off a little bit, but they're not fuck with it. Caprice Classic. Now, I can say I don't exactly know what these rivets are all about. I think that would rattle after a while, this one. I don't exactly know what kind of uh, purpose that serves or there's some kind of styling. Anyway, very much a uh, 80s design, obviously. In the early 90s is when uh, the new Caprice design got a little bit more rounded up top and uh, even more of the cop car design kind of thing, or uh, the Caprice that uh, everybody knows. And of course, they uh, they ran that for quite a few years too. So, at this time, uh, Chevrolet really wasn't uh, changing all the time. They they uh, probably were more profitable by keeping things kind of the way they were. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Talk soon. Bye.